Well, good afternoon, evening, morning, whenever you are seeing this, uh, Burlington. I am Marianne Mead Ward, your mayor, and welcome to the next installment of Burlington Matters, where we talk about things that are on your mind and share information in the community. And we always, of course, love to hear from you. So if you want to get in touch with my office or me, you can connect with me at mayor at burlington.ca. So let's get started. Uh, we always have a great lineup of guests and tonight's show is no different. We are welcoming Carla Nell from the Burlington Chamber of Commerce and Pam Belgrade from Tourism Burlington. And they are also two of the five members of Team Burlington, which includes the economic development, two BIAs, Aldershot and Downtown, and of course the Chamber and Tourism, and they've been doing outstanding work throughout the COVID crisis, and that is what we're going to talk about. And we're going to talk about what comes next. I know that is on everybody's mind, is how long are we going to be in this? When are we going to see uh, you know, more relaxation, a reopening? Uh, when's the economy going to get going? So these are some of the things that we're going to find out from our outstanding panelists. So first, um, I would like to talk to Carla uh, about what is happening with the business resources that, that you've created and how you've already, uh, you, you guys jumped into action almost immediately. It was awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, as you mentioned, Team Burlington came together very, very quickly, uh, almost immediately in order to ensure that all of our business agencies and organizations across the community were very much aligned to support the business community through this crisis. So we have been working hard, collaborating, pooling resources and expertise in order to bring information in a timely manner to the business community, businesses across the city and beyond. And one of the ways that we've worked very hard to ensure that timely information is communicated and available is through a Team Burlington landing page that we set up on the Burlington Chamber's website to be that one-stop shop for resources and information for businesses with rapid fire announcements, developments happening on a daily basis, the landscape changing so quickly we wanted to ensure that there was that one place, that one version of the truth to help businesses access information that was relevant as quickly as possible. So I think it's been an important platform that has provided a tremendous about, amount of support for businesses across the city. So if I'm a business, what, what kind of specific things can I find when I go there? Well, there's a, a host of resources, whether it's quick access to hotlines where questions can be effectively triaged and directed to the appropriate level of government, uh, analysis and summary of all of the different relief programs and mechanisms that have been provided by the city, the province, the federal government, um, you know, quick access to resources so people know where to go to get the help that every level of government is working so hard to provide. So, you know, many summaries, quick links, um, as well as other resources to support employees and employers, things like access to mental health resources, which has been a very important issue for the community. So it's a very robust page. It also includes information about the many non-for-profits and charities that have been doing exceptional work in order to support the broader community through the crisis. So again, intended to be that one-stop place for business. And there's also an opportunity if there's a question or something that isn't addressed through that resource page to call someone directly and we'll work very hard to make sure that we respond and connect the right people to help solve. So you're open taking calls just remotely as most of us are working. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. We and I'll, I'll this is throughout. That's great. I'll uh, take this moment to put in a plug for the task force, which the two of you are also part of, uh, the uh, the Burlington um, uh, Community Task Force that really brought together up to 50 leaders of various sectors to work together. And one of the first things we did was also create that that page uh, for resources. And I know our our page is linked together. Uh, so if you're a business, you can go, it redirects you back to what, what work you're doing. And, you know, I think throughout this, we've seen Burlington uh, come together 
and instead of reinventing the wheel, finding out where the gaps and opportunities are and then and then plugging those. And so um, really appreciate that from the two of you being part of that. But but just how well the community, I would say, is working together with all other levels of government and with each other. It's how we're going to get through this. Yeah, I think we... uh, so. Pam, uh, turning. Sorry, go ahead. No, go, go ahead. ahead, Carla. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that the whole environment has been characterized by, you know, partnership and giving. And we've really seen that um, as, a, as a characteristic and a feature that has contributed to a lot of the success. That's why we're number one. <laughs> people always ask me, I say it's our people. It's, it's the people who live and work and do business here. And, uh, and we've just seen them step up in, in an incredible way uh, in, a, in a crisis that none of us have or, or maybe hopefully will ever have to deal with, a deadly global pan pandemic. Uh, there's no rule book for that. And, and we're writing our own story and uh, the collaboration and the care is just amazing. Uh, so let's uh, let's talk about one of our sectors that is really hard hit, uh, Pam. And, um, and and I know that various levels of government are trying to figure out what to what to do about that. But that's the the hospitality tourism uh, sector where you really can't uh, do that remotely. <laughs> Uh, so, so talk to us about that. Um, what's the impact here in Burlington? We have a lot of uh, businesses in that sector. What does that look like and how can, uh, how, how is your team uh, reaching out? Great. Well, thank you for having me also um, and uh, happy to share information about uh, tourism and uh, certainly the hospitality industry has been uh, hit very hard uh, as has most businesses, but uh, a recent study indicated that 44% of the hospitality industry surveyed said they wouldn't survive um, if they weren't able to get back to business at the end of May. So that's certainly disconcerting. Uh, in Burlington specifically, three hotels closed uh, during March out of the 10 hotels that we have. So that's 492 rooms out of uh, 1,100 that are no longer uh, operating right now, and the rest are operating at a 20% occupancy. Uh, some of the hotels have been working with the healthcare uh, locally to help support them uh, with rooms for first uh, responders and alternate housing for social services. And then our restaurant industry, we have 450 restaurants in Burlington. Now that includes fast food restaurants, but Many of the full service properties closed initially, but as time and relief efforts uh, came forward, uh, they've pivoted and currently there's about 120 that are offering takeaway and curbside pickups. Um, so encourage residents to continue to support those businesses. They, they saw a quick uptake, but they have seen a bit of a decline. So get out there, support them, uh, not only restaurants, but retail. So from a Tourism Burlington perspective, we're the destination marketing organization for the city. And yeah, we had to pivot too and say, okay, how can we help our partners? So we actually had a marketing committee uh, the, the week before lockdown happened and we started talking already at that point. What can you do to mitigate um, your expenses? What can you do to help market and touch base with your customers? How can we communicate together? And then since then, we've been working a lot on promotion of available services with our Team Burlington partners. We've done some food service listings um, of those ones that are open and having takeout. And we've been doing a lot of engagement through our various um, platforms to um, share messages about things like Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day is coming. You can still enjoy it. These are the kinds of things you can still do. So there's a couple of blogs about that. We've also done some fun things. We've done some Burlington puzzles and pictures of Burlington. We've done uh, bingo games that is support local. Uh, we've done a collaboration with the, the culture boards uh, to encourage physical distancing, but to go on their websites and see what their um, they have to offer. And the RBG has a great at home uh, campaign. So we're certainly working with the local partners and then a lot of the other uh, tourism partners across the province and uh, Canada. And there's a there's an ad advocacy uh, that your initiative that you're working on are part of. Tell us a little bit about that, uh, Pam. 
Well, we're we're doing a, a number of things. We're advocating uh, at the various levels of government, certainly working with Minister McLeod, that's our Minister for Tourism, Recreation, Sport, Culture. Uh, there's been uh, panels set up across the province and um, for that sector, and I'm going to be participating in one of the subcommittees. We're also advocating... Um, for support as um, our tour team Burlington partners are where things like rent relief and I think Carla's probably going to talk about that in a, in a few minutes um, but uh, we also are um, are doing a economic recovery survey with our partners so that we are poised and ready to you know once we're it's safe to do so that we can uh, try to help those local businesses whether it's focusing primarily on residents, and then hopefully down the road visiting friends and family. So encouraging them to come back and experience what they can uh, with physical distancing in place. That's great. So yeah, let's talk about the, uh, the rent relief program. The federal government has announced some commercial rent relief. Certainly, uh, that's, that's where our hospitality sector is really hit. You still have to pay the rent if you don't own the building and you don't have the revenue coming in. So so what's happening there, Carla? So the the federal and provincial governments have partnered to provide uh, a form of commercial rent relief program to landlords and tenants. Um, there are still many details that have yet to be revealed about it. We are, however, hearing at this time that the program is complex and that the eligibility criteria as known may be so stringent that many commercial property owners and or tenants will not be able to take advantage of the program. So we're very concerned about that. And it's a topic that we're discussing at length, both with our provincial and federal counterparts and stakeholders across the community because the hospitality sector, as, as well as many other forms of retail, rent is the foremost issue for them. So we're hoping that there will be some additional consideration given to how to target this relief to those tenants who are most in need. And we're working closely with our counterparts at the Ontario Chamber, the Canadian Chamber, speaking to cabinet ministers, as well as our members of local and federal or provincial and federal parliament locally, to try to ensure that they understand the perspective, how critical this issue and this form of relief is not only to survival during the crisis phase, but also as a, a key enabler of recovery moving forward. That's great. And we'll just, uh, uh, for those who may be just tuning in and, and aren't aware of where the municipal role is, we have limited tools, as you know, but the city has uh, extended the the payment for property tax. So if people are having trouble making it, uh, making their payments from a cash flow standpoint till the end of June, and we'll have an opportunity to review that uh, before the end of June and extend if need be. Of course, transit is free, which helps folks getting to and from work. And that was primarily done to uh, keep drivers and passengers at a safe distance uh, from each other. Parking is free downtown. Uh, that, that, you know, helps out a little bit for those people that uh, still have to work. Or if you're coming downtown to, to shop um, in a virtual way, that curbside pickup piece. Uh, and those are really the the limited tools that the municipality has, and we uh, we too are asking for federal and uh, and will be asking for provincial funding uh, ourselves. We've taken a, a huge revenue hit, and so you know everyone feels it in a slightly uh, different way. We're city of Burlington is okay right now. Uh, our shortfall to the end of June is roughly two hundred thousand, but but the revenue loss is seven and a half million. And that's made up with cost cutting and, and draws from reserves and other measures. But, um, you know, in, in a way, the city can appreciate what some of the businesses are going through with, with that huge drop in revenue because everything is shut down. So we're keen to get, to get opened up again. And I know uh, you are too. So, uh, so maybe Pam, talk to us about the, uh, the new Burlington Economic Recovery Network that uh, the team has, the team Burlington uh, has started and who's on it. What's, what's that focus going to be? Yeah, so we, uh, we took a report to council talking about a number of uh, 
things related to COVID-19 in the business community. And one of the uh, recommendations made by the team was that we wanted to strike an economic recovery network, uh, which would bring together key stakeholders and business leaders from across Burlington to develop a recovery strategy uh, that will prepare our economy for recovery from this crisis. So, um, we have uh, been working on a terms of reference and uh, we're reaching out to uh, members to participate in the steering committee and we're also looking at subcommittees uh, for that because there's there it's um, there's so many great people out there that uh, we want to get engaged uh, through this process and there's also various sectors that have a unique perspective so we want to engage as much of the business community as we can through that process and uh, and we're looking to put a number of in initiatives in place including reducing red tape where we can and collaborating where we can so um, it, it's we're looking forward to moving to that next phase of uh, reopening and recovery. Well, and I've uh, been honoured to be invited to be a part of that. Uh, thank you. And also one of my council colleagues, Kelvin Galbraith, uh, the Ward 1 councillor, who is also a business owner, also sits on the Aldershot BIA. So he will be uh, an outstanding resource uh, to that team from, uh, from council. And again, it's all about, uh, it's all about working together and collaboration. Uh, Carla, talk to us about some of the um, additional supports you've been doing. Um, the team has been doing webinars and conferences uh, on a regular basis. Uh, tell us about some of those. Well, one of our goals has been to, you know, connect leaders across the community to draw upon one another's strengths and skill sets in order to support the business community. So we've been hosting a series of business forums to connect businesses to the various levels of government. Uh, we had a municipal government forum, a provincial as well as federal. We've had a number of cabinet ministers participate. You know, the intention being to ensure that, you know, government understands the perspectives and the needs of the business community to inform their programming and policy to provide support. But beyond that, we've also uh, been working with key partners like the DeGroote School of Business, McMaster University, Mohawk College, to connect uh, experts within business to the business community directly, to provide them with insights about how to survive during this crisis phase, how to adapt, um, and to provide advisory services that can help businesses respond in both the short and long term. So the intention is to ensure that we're really drawing from the pool of experts we have, that we're forging those partnerships and we're providing that additional level of support to businesses during this time. Uh, those webinars, those online offerings have all been recorded. They're available through the Chamber's YouTube channel. So for those who may have missed it, uh, many of the questions that were posed during those forums may be shared by others. So we, we certainly encourage people to take advantage not only of those digital resources, but the networks that are being promoted through that series because there's a lot of ongoing support that is available at no cost to businesses through, uh, throughout the city. That's great, and we uh, we also extended uh, in Burlington, uh, my office, uh, working with the team, uh, an invitation to the province, because of course they have their task force on economic recovery uh, and have started their work and will be engaging with municipalities. So stay tuned on that in the community. We, we hope that they will take us up on our invitation to come and talk directly to our businesses about what recovery looks like here and for us. Uh, Pam, I wanna come back to, to something that you said about the survey that was done that showed a number of businesses just not being able to make it past the end of May. You know, what are what are you hearing and seeing for Burlington? Are we gonna see clo closures of businesses that are permanent here? Is there a way for us to, uh, you know, with some of the programming uh, and the funding that is being offered to uh, save those and so that we don't have any permanent disruptions what what can you tell us well I think unfortunately there will be probably as hopefully a small small number of businesses that may not be able to survive uh, past uh, the end of May we um, you know certainly the rent relief is one thing that they have loud and clear especially the restaurants uh, that they were on a call with the Ontario Restaurant Motel Hotel Association and that organization is advocating for a number of government uh, 
changes, but um, we're working, um, you know, part of the challenge is messaging right now, right? Because the messaging right now is um, from everyone is to stay home unless you need to really get outdoors. So it's it's hard to encourage um, support uh, other than the physical distancing and the um, with the restaurants and retail who are able to do that. So, um, but we want to move forward with encouraging things like uh, having local uh, businesses uh, still continue to host activities that they're able to host moving forward. We want to uh, look at things like uh, free passes or value added things uh, if we're able to in the summer or the fall. So we're we're looking at any ways that we can help support the business from you know the, the advocacy perspective and also from doing campaigns again focusing mostly on residents to get them out and support the business where where they can. And there is uh, I did see an online campaign to support local business uh, and and I'm sure Team Burlington was a key part of that. Uh, Carla, tell us about that local, you know, shop local campaign. Well, you, you know, I think it's been really important for, you know, residents and all community members to understand how they can really support businesses during this unprecedented time. And, you know, we've been very vocal about encouraging everyone in the community to try to purchase locally to the extent that they can. You know, looking at e-commerce opportunities, buying gift cards, uh, ordering takeout and, and delivery, uh, arranging for curbside or contactless delivery to the extent that a service can be made available that way. It's really important that as we make purchasing decisions, particularly right now, that we support local businesses who are very much the heartbeat of our community. You know, their employers, their employees are our neighbors, and and we really want to ensure that to the extent that that people need to procure, need to purchase, that they're really thinking about choosing local and loving local, as we've put it throughout so much of our messaging, and and we've definitely seen evidence of that and and a trend toward it, and and we can't say enough, you know, that those purchasing decisions really make a difference right now, and and they will be critical to the to the success or failure and the ability of some of these businesses to survive to get to that point of recovery. Well, and I think we heard some good news uh, for the for for the entire economy earlier this week from the premier announcing that there will be additional uh, sectors that are allowed to open garden centers, of course, uh, was part of that um, hardware stores home renovation stores, if you will, uh, you know, with restrictions, uh, the precautions have to be there. But I think the learning that we've figured out is that, you know, if you time your your pickup or have curbside, have the ability, um, and one of the criteria, of course, even for the opening is that you have a, uh, a, a storefront, like a ground level door that you can, can facilitate curb, curbside pickups. So, um, you know, those are all good signals. I think the construction industry is uh, also now being able to get going. And these are all parts of the engine of the of the economy that will help get things going again uh, sooner, I, I think, than the end of May. Obviously, we're, we're in the middle of May right now. And uh, so I know that's welcome news uh, for for many in the sector to to see those reopenings. So the final question in our last few minutes is uh, is just silver lining. Let's leave on a hopeful note. What what have you seen? Um, and if you want to throw in the one thing you're going to do once we, I know what that's going to be for me. I'm going to get a giant plate of oysters and a martini with my good friends uh, at one of our local restaurants that I love. Uh, but, you know, what are you seeing in the sectors in the business community that you think will be a permanent change out of this that is a silver lining and uh, and what you're going to do when it's all over? Uh, we'll start with um, who wants to go first? Pam, how about uh, how about we start with you, Pam? Well, Burlington's always been strong in co collaboration, but I think it, this has really shown how well people have come together not only in the business community but in in other areas from the residents and showing support for healthcare workers i think there's an appreciation for being together and for family and community that um and physical activity that people are out enjoying the outdoors and walking with phys physical distancing so i hope all of that 
continues and I'm sure the collaboration will. Um, as far as one thing I would I will do, I want to hug my mom. It's been, oh. you know, eight weeks and uh, we've been doing physical distancing walks when I've taken her groceries. But uh, yeah, that's what I'd like to do. That's great. Carla, what about you? Well, and certainly, you know, from the business community perspectives, I mean, we have seen such incredible success stories. You know, the ability and the agility of our business community to adapt uh, is something that, you know, I, it, it strikes me each and every day how incredible and creative uh, our business community members really are. And and also the incredible support that they have shown one another. There's been, been so many acts of kindness and generosity. We've been very mindful about supporting local, whether it's through our businesses and even our nonprofits who and charities who take care of so many within this community. So, you know, my hope is that that spirit of cooperation and partnership and that genuine kindness persists long after the crisis abates because I think it's been key to our success as a community and, and it's created a sense of, of solidarity that is so incredibly strong. It's always been a characteristic of, of what has made Burlington such a special place, but to see it and witness it each and every day is, it's, I believe something that, you know, many of us have, have really cherished during this time. And, and I, I, I'm confident it's gonna persist as we move forward. And what's one thing you wanna, you're looking forward to doing after all? Oh my goodness, I'm dying to get a haircut. I have to tell you. <laughs> I miss my hairdresser. Yeah, I, yeah, that's at the top of my list. But also, you know, seeing some of my family where, you know, for different reasons, we've been we've been physical distancing, and you know, I'm really looking forward to giving some of some of my loved ones a, a, a big hug that I haven't been able to do for some time. So. We're gonna have a giant community hug, a huge parade with hundreds of cars and floats <laughs> and marching bands. Yeah, we're gonna have a big Burlington celebration when uh, when we get through all this and we can come together again. I want to thank you. We are out of time today. Thank you so much, Carla Nell, uh, Burlington Chamber of Commerce, Pam B Belgrade, Tourism Burlington, and thanks to all of you for tuning in for Burlington Matters. See you soon. <laughs>